Hi, jewellery makers. Thank you for joining us today. I know it's a really busy time. I hope you're all ready for Christmas. Um, we're going to do box 23 out of the advent calendar today. Um, so we're not many left now, just today and tomorrow. So I'm going to just swiddle that round a little bit if I can while I get the box. There we go. Now I can put that back. So if I put on here, let's move that out of the way so you can see. We have, <laughs> oh, it's tied. <laughs> it is a tiny little jadeite donut. Let's have a look. So let's take that out so you can have a look at it. Um, I think it is white. They, they all seem to vary, to be honest with you. Um, in in my in the ne necklace that I've made, I think it's slightly darker. Um, so um, so I'm going to show you uh, today uh, how how I made that. Um, obviously, it took me longer than an hour, so I've got um, stages, and also there is um, soldering involved. And we all know <laughs> soldering goes perfectly well when you're at home, but not necessarily in front of the camera. So um, we'll do our best. We'll have a bit of fun. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Um, we'll move on. I've got another one to, to use and show you. Um, so uh, yeah, so shall we, shall we start? Let's start. I'm going to move that little one out of the way so that I don't lose it. Um, what I've done is for my first, I'll, I've got lots and lots of tools here by the side of me. So what I'll do is I will go through those tools um, as I use them. Uh, because I've probably got too many tools. Um, I don't want to bore you with all those because if you're working in your own uh, metal smithing room, then you'll have all these around you anyway. So uh, we'll just pick them up as we need them and I'll tell you what I'm using. So first of all, um, let's start with the um, template, uh, which is an absolute boon in, for this demonstration. I've also got a one inch square piece. Of, <laughs> I've got number one on the back because that's, uh, this is my first stage. Um, so what I did was with this um, template and got that as well. Um, so uh, what I did was I got a little bit of graph paper and I marked from corner, let me use this, I marked this from corner to corner to find the center. Then I, I measured the inside of the little, I measured inside of that and that was five millimeters. So five millimeter these are all marked these markings on here are so useful they're not just there um not just there <laughs> yeah they're there for a reason so uh, this one by the five surprisingly enough is the five millimeter so i tell you what let's just move that out of the way for now so what i did was i got i used a pencil and I, I'd mark the centre so I knew where to, where to mark that. Now the um, the little donut itself. Well, the one I got was fourteen. Yeah, I think the one I yeah they got, it fits in fourteen and thirteen. So what I did was I marked the thirteen one. I mean it, it is it isn't absolute. Yeah, that, that's the outer diameter of the donut. And it isn't absolutely essential because once we've got this um, stone in the middle, um, we've got something to work from, but it's a really good guide. Now, as you can see from the necklace, it's actually got uh, in there, it's got a bezel set stone inside the donut. So today, if we've got time, we're doing a bezel set stone and we're doing the, uh, and a prong setting. We're going to prong set the donut and hopefully bezel set 
the, the stone in them. Uh, I've used a garnet, you can use whatever you like. I think in my sample that I'm doing today, I've got a malachite, so it doesn't really matter what, whatever your stone of choice is. Now, I've, um, because we're short on time, I haven't made my own bezel. <laughs> I know, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I've made a bezel, uh, I've bought the bezel, and I'm going to solder it on. So, uh, there we go, make sure I've got everything, yeah. So, what I did when I got to this point, I marked, uh, on. let's go back to the template, on here, as I say, it's got these markings on that aren't just for, um, for decoration. And I marked where the four dots were uh, to give me an idea. It, that, that again isn't set in stone because we can alter that if we need to as we go along. So next what I did was I got my scribe. So this, this is a scribe. Uh, it's just got two, two pointy ends, probably one of the most useful tools in the workshop. So what I did to help me, I put my five millimeter template over there and I went round and round and round and round until it had marked in there, right? I then did exactly the same in the 13 millimeter. I went round and round and round and round, then marked where I wanted, uh, where I think I want my prongs, and I marked where I'm going to drill or punch a hole for the um, for the jump ring to go through to hang it from the necklace. So let's get one that's marked. Now this is one that went went wrong. It, it didn't go wrong. I decided to do it in a different way. We are going to bezel set. Uh, put the bezel on here first before we put the prongs on. But I don't know if you can see that. I have got the markings that I've just showed you. Can you, can you see that on the screen or is it? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, there you can see perfectly. So these are the markings that I'm going to be working from. So we can put those two to one side. Right, I've got here My next one, so bear with me while I get this open. I've kept them all separate so we, we knew where we were going. So the next thing to do, the first thing to do, is to solder that onto the middle of there. So that's what we're going to do next, with a good wind behind us. So there we go. So I've got some, um, some flux there and some solder and I've got a little paint brush Where's my paint brush? oh that's right by the side of me so what we're going to do what well, I'll also just mention as we go through this as a lot of you will know when you're so when you put in flux on a piece and you're soldering it's going to um, oxidize and, and stay in the metal. So what you normally do after every solder is uh, put it in pickle. Now pickle is an acid which um, it takes off the oxidization and makes the piece clean again. Now we haven't got time to stand around while it's pickling so uh, we won't be doing that bit today but I will tell you when I would normally pickle and then we'll go on to another piece. So Pickle, why is it called pickle? Um, it's called pickle because before we had all these fancy new chemicals, um, people used to use um, vinegar and salt, and which of course is, is a pickle for food. So that's, that's why it's still called pickle today. Um, just a, an interesting fact. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a bit of Oh, I've got a piece sticking out of there. Let me just trim this off. No, I, won't pull, I, won't, I don't know where I've put my scissors. There we go. So we put a little bit of flux on there. Let that start drying. Now we're going to do on here what we call sweat, sweat soldering. 
and sweat soldering is where you take the smallest piece and you pop um, your, you melt your solder onto the back of the smallest piece so let's get the charcoal block I'm using a charcoal block today um, let's pop some more of that on there oh are we there is that something on the end of there never mind so now let's pick up some and anybody who's soldered before knows when you put flux on and then you add the heat it all starts jumping around and misbehaving so but anyway we, we're gonna we're gonna fly by the seat of our pants today so let's uh, see if we can melt this here we go yeah there you go it's started jumping around so what we're going to do is to, we want to melt this all over the back of there get my tweezers spread it out there we go that one went okay so we're now going to take that I've got a pot of water here there we go pot of water there and some kitchen paper I'm going to dry that and dry that off but what I'm also going to do is this is what I'm saying in fact let me show you this let me pop you that down there that's what I mean by the oxidation that's gone all black and f solder doesn't like flowing if things are dirty so that's why that's why we pickle it but today we're going to try and see if this will work by just rubbing it a little bit with some wire wool and this is uh, double zero double zero wire wool that's uh, that's the size so what we're going to do next it will see if it doesn't work it's not the end of the world so let's pop that back on there there we go like that that's already got some flux on it I'm going to reflux this I'm going to move over a little bit so you can see properly I'm going to flux that pop it on there like that now, if I could just explain what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the heat, I'm going to keep all the heat moving around all the time onto this back plate. By the way, this is a one millimetre thickness of sterling silver and it's a one inch square. Um, so we're going to heat the back plate. The reason being that's, that's the bit, the, the bezel will heat up much much quicker because it's so tiny so what we're hoping to do is to heat all this up and the residual heat will put enough heat into the bezel that solder will uh, flow underneath and you'll you should see a little silver rim all the way around and uh, and then the two will be together but we'll see whoa I felt this was bass before it came and so it's a little bit like a frame throw so we uh, go in slowly otherwise it will it will jump around once once the flux is dry it'll act like a glue and it'll stay in place Ooh. so as I say keep keep moving keep moving don't need to touch touch the flame onto that bezel at all otherwise it'll melt So we're looking for a, a fine silver line all the way around that bezel. Some people would heat this up from underneath, which you can do, uh, but just for convenience today. I think we might have done it. Shall we have a look? If it falls off, it falls off. <laughs> so let's see. There we go. So we're now going to pop it. I don't know if you can see the water. We're going to pop it into the water again. If it's not soldered, it will fall off. It will fall off at this, at this point. So as you can see, that is soldered onto there now. OK, now, as you'll also notice, it's very black and oxidized. That is the way 
that is when we would put it into the pickle. But because we're not pickling today, we're going to put that to one side and we're going to bring in one that's already done. Okay, so you just bear with me. Let's move that out of the way again. It's a bit ugly, it's well used. Okay. And there actually isn't too much more soldering. Um, it, it's a lovely piece. I, I mean, I, I just love setting stones on stones, in stones. Um, and it was perfect for me to get a little um, donut like that so that I could practice and see what we could do. OK, so here we've got one that's been in pickle. It's been cl cleaned up. What, what, you would, what you really want to get into the habit of doing is cleaning, filing, using your emery paper, um, just basically cleaning up as you go along. So if I can show you now, we've got that. Where's my little donut? That's the one I've got out of the box. Will it fit? Yes. So you can see now that I've got that in the centre. I've got... Um, my marks for the drilling which I've already drilled uh, and I know lots and lots of you have got um, you've got your Dremel lots of you have got the stand that goes with the Dremel um, so you can use it like a like a bench drill uh, it's really really useful and lots of you have got the flex shaft I know you've got all sorts of bits and pieces to do with the Dremel and I've used a drill for mine so I used a one and a half mil drill for the one in the for the one in the for the hole in the corner because that's where the um, jump ring is going to go and I used a one mil drill bit for it might have been even slightly smaller but it's around one mil uh, for where I want to put the prongs now um, you can always use something like this if you've got it I know this this there we go let me move this so you can see it um, I, I had mine from jewelry maker and I know we've had them on recently but you could have hole punches metal hole punches these drills whatever is your preferred method to be perfectly honest with you so I'll put that out of the way but mine let's take that donut off there again as you can see mine there's the back mine are all drilled and I've sanded and and I've done a done a quick polish so there's no oxidization on there at all so for the prongs I've used one millimeter wire which I've cut into one and a half centimeters now one and a half centimeters is much too much but I'd rather have more than and than not enough this is for the prongs to hold on the donut so Let's put that to one side. What, so here's my four one and a half cent. Did I say millimeters? I meant centimeters. One and a, one and a half, one and a half centimeters. I always get those muddled up. So I've cut four of those for the prongs. And what I've done, and I've just tell you what I'll do. I'll use that. What I've done at home. Where can you see? Let me keep coming in so you can see me. That would help, wouldn't it? I have got my little hammer so I, I use this little hammer uh, we've got a similar one on the board behind us so um, I, I know we sell them so what I did was but I did use my steel block but because um, I've been using an anvil today I didn't ring my steel block so I can do it on here so you just hold, hold it with one finger and you, you get your hammer and just on the end just as just to stroke it so that it just widens out that little bit at that end now if I put that there can you see it yeah there we go Let's move these out move these out of your way and you can see what I've done uh, in fact if I move it you can probably see the reflection in it okay so yes it's exactly like a nail head um so this is probably an unconventional way of adding 
uh, prongs to a piece of silver. Very often people will just put a little dent in, in the place and then they'll hold this very carefully with a pair of tweezers and get their gun and melt the solder. And, um, you know, it, it's quite hard work like that. So I've tried to take... Um, I've tried to take the pain out of it really. So what I'm going to do is, I, I, I've done all four of these pieces of wire, I've flattened them out at the side. So what I'm going to do is from the back put the unsoldered, the unhammered wire. I'm going to put all four of those in. There we go. I, I hope this works on screen because um, it's a really, really good method. So let's let's hope it works for us. Let's hope the uh, somebody's looking down on us today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back my um, charcoal block, and I've got two old pieces of charcoal block, and I'm going to support that in there like that these are in my way of pushing me over so let me move those so how's that so we've now got four pieces of one millimeter wire through those holes and the flattened bits are sticking up in the air let me push that back because we don't want it slipping off when we put the torch on it or else we'd be in big trouble uh, right so um what i'm going to do i'll talk you through it before i do it i am going to put flux and solder round all those four uh, prongs, so to speak, what will be prongs. When I've done that and I've got the solder to melt, this again, uh, going back, we are not going anywhere near those prongs with the torch. We're just concentrating on this because those those um, prongs will melt as quick as anything. And you can bet about your bottom dollar if they're going to melt, they'll melt while I'm doing it for you. Um, they, it only does it when people are watching, I'm sure. Um, and then what I'm going to do is turn that, while it's still hot, while I've still got the torch on, is turn that over and I'm going to pull the solder through to the front. Now, I'll tell you the reason why I'm going to pull the solder through to the front is because when it's all soldered, we're going to cut off these back pieces and that's going to get flat, that's going to get filed and sanded and it's all going to be really nice at the back. So if we'd only got solder at the back, we've, only, we've got a really, really good chance of filing it off, cutting it off. If we've got some coming up at the front, we stand more of a chance for these prongs to stay in place where we want them. So... Let's, uh, you know, bought with me a new paintbrush and it's one of the, <laughs> it's sticking right out. But hey ho, that's the way of the world. So I'm going to paint that on there. Get plenty on. And, and again, it will all bounce about once we get the heat on it. This is a liquid flux that I'm using. Um, it's the Argentian one that um, jewelry maker used to, or, or still do sell, I think. Um, at home, I use a borax cone and dish. Um, I just bring this with me for convenience sake. Um, but the only reason I do that is because that was how what I was taught to use. So you just get you just get used to using what you were taught to use. Right, so let's get a little bit, oh, you see, I, I use little, I um, don't think you can see these, do you, can you? I, I use little seashells. Nope. See if I can get them in shot. There you are. I use little seashells just to, um, to put my flux, and my, because they're convenient, and it doesn't matter if you want to throw them away they get messed up you can just throw them away right this is going not going to play ball right excuse me shall i come back up here again now right so i'm going to put plenty of solder on the back because it doesn't matter if it may normally you go a bit careful because every bit of solder you have to clean up but because we're going to have to clean up this back anyway it doesn't really matter how much we put on because 
that's nearly falling off um, because um, it's all going to go anyway. But if we were putting this on the front, there's no way I'd put all this solder on here. Right, so we've got that all fluxed and soldered. Let's move these all out of the way. And the little donut. Let me put this back where you can see it. These are actually falling off. Right, so let's go. <laughs> this is the telling time. This is the last of the soldering. So um, let's see how we get on. It's all going to jump around. I'm going to turn it down a little bit, actually. It's all going to jump around. So what I'm going to do is go around on, on the charcoal block without even touching the silver. I'm going to go around so that it dries up the flux and then hopefully the solder won't jump around so much. Because it, it does, it jumps everywhere while the flux, before the flux is dry. But as you can see, uh, what we'll do is we'll get a pair of tweezers. Now, what you should do is always hold your torch in your non-dominant hand. In the other hand, you, you use either a soldering pick, a pair of tweezers, tweezers which is, whichever is your, your preferred choice. So we're going to just heat up this back place. Now, turn down the torch, so it might take a little bit longer, but that's maybe not a bad thing. You can see it oxidising already. And the flux takes quite a lot of um, cleaning off as well when it's burned on. So we're just heating up this back plate. Oh, there, that one's gone, look. Don't know, if you could, don't know how much you can see. Here we are, they're all going. Oh, look at that. That's all flowing beautifully. Okay, is that one gone too? So what we're going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to turn that over. I'm going to keep this torch away from those prongs, but we want to look for a little silver ring. In fact, it's come through on some. A little silver ring and just pull up that solder. I'm waving my arms about. You can't see me, I know, but uh, never mind. So, oh, there you go. We beautifully, blimey, must be my lucky, lucky day today. Right, there we go. So, um, I don't know how much you can see there. Can, I, can you see, Adam, can you see those silver rings that have come around the prongs? Because that, that's the solder that we've pulled through. So we're gonna just dunk that in the water. Now, let me move this uh, hot charcoal block before I burnt myself on it, so I'll put that out of the way. So, now, we, we've got, as again, it's dirty. You can see, I mean, it's very obvious um, once you demonstrate it to show why you use pickle. You use pickle wool. Some people keep it in a, a slow cooker. Some people, well, me, I used to do use, put it in a slow cooker, um, but because it's acid, it, it, kept, it kept breaking them. Um, so I now took, I took a tip from other, other jewellery makers, um, which was to put your pickle in a jam jar, and then the jam jar I put into a baby bottle warmer. And uh, so it's all contained in the jam jar and it heats up a lot quicker. Even a mini um, slow cooker, it, it, you know, it takes quite a little while. So the, um, the, mil the milk bottle warmer uh, has got a temperature control on it so it keeps cutting out and coming back in. So all, all day long, if you're soldering, you've got your warm pickle there ready to use. So there we go so that's so that would now be cleaned up in the pickle but because we haven't we haven't got any pickle what we're going to do we just dry it off a little bit I'll just show you on this piece just for um just to show you what i do really although we won't use this piece because it's dirty right now i'm going to use my flush cutters um, this is one of the tools that I've got by the side of me here. And we're going to trim off those back pieces. 
this is why we want the solder to come up to the front and flirt all over the place we want the solder to come up to the front to give us a better chance of these prongs staying in place because we are going to have to push them over um, over the um, donut so there we go so that's what we're left with there is it looks a bit of a mess doesn't it <laughs> but i assure you you'd you put it in your pickle you clean it up and, uh, and and in fact that that one is a clean one um it's not being filed or anything but that's a clean one so that's just left with a few little bits sticking out let's move these out of the way you put i um i put any little bits of um silver in my pot down here so we'll keep that so there we go so what we would do there we would file it let me show you so we would then well this is what i do obviously whatever method you use to clean up your silver is what you'd use um, but i would file that off i would give it a good good old filing like that i would then work through the grits on the emery paper and give it a nice old polish up and if i put that to one side i can show you one you and you know I, I think you'll be surprised at what you see here because this one has been done in exact has been done in exactly the same way there we go i've got some bits and pieces here some jump rings to fasten it to and uh, my little malachite but if i show you this uh, in fact i will put it down onto the board that has had um that that's had holes in and the prongs going through and that's the way i've um, i've cleaned it up and you actually cannot tell from the back it's got a few scratches on but that'll all be done in the final polish etc um, but you can't see any holes or any pieces of wire sticking through right so oh, actually we're racing through this because i've done it in stages uh, what i'm going to use next is the um, jewellery maker stone setting kit um, I'm going to bring that I'm not going to use everything I'll just take out the bits I'm going to use I'm going to use the square pusher I'm going to use the prong pusher and possibly the burnisher so I'll get those three out of the kit now the difference between these two I won't need that for a little while so let's put that out of the way um, that's a square pusher and that's what I'm going to use to push over the bezel over the stone the other one is a prong pusher and I don't know if you can see that but that if I which way that way you've got a little groove in and that little groove go goes around the um, goes around your prongs basically and you push push them over okay so what we're going to do next is pop in fact i think what i will do next is take off some of the length of this so uh, let me get my cutters again let's take off some of the length of these so that i can get in with my pusher i want to take them this isn't going to be the final cut because I don't, I, I, I get down level so that I can see, but I'm not taking it to the final cut. I just want to take quite a bit of this height off. And I'm going to try and, yeah, so I can get my prong pusher in to do the mandrel, to, to do the bezel. I've talked about mandrels so much today, I'm calling everything a mandrel. Right, so um, just just leave. A bit more than we need to press over there so there's a few more little bits for the pot so we put those to one side so let's uh, take that off again now we're going to pop this little stone in here oh did you hear that click 
Uh, so that's a nice fit to start with and that's a really, really good sign. Although I can't take any credit of that for that. Of course, had I made the bezel, I would be taking great credit. But the fact that I bought the bezel is of no credit at all to me. Um, so, I, think, I mean, we've done, all the, we've done all our soldering now. You wouldn't believe it looking at the mess I've got around me here. So what, the way we're going to set the bezel... I have um, filed down that bezel a little bit because you, you don't want it going, if it's too high, um, and I'll show you how to, to tell if it's too high, you will get a lot of puckering in, in the bezel and you don't want that to take a lot of smoothing out. So what you do with a, with a, a, a cabochon, it has straight sides and then it starts to curve. You want your silver from the bezel just to go over where the curve starts. So you go slightly above the straight side and a little bit uh, on the curve. And that's uh, it. also it won't cover up your stone uh, as much because you, you know you've paid good money for your stone. You want to see it. Now I might, if you don't mind, just put for the first couple of goes just put my finger on that stone now what we're going to do is we're going to press in and then over so let's see if we can show you that so i'm going in and then over and i'm not giving it all my strength i'm going to do it a little bit at a time and then we're going to go up we work in opposite so i'm then going to go opposite that in over so say it's north south east and west i'm now going to do the i've done north and south i'm now going to do east and west in and over so i may not need to hold that stone so much now so i'm just going to do those four points a little bit more because we only we didn't do them to full strength we still won't do them to full strength but i'm going to go round not necessarily opposites this time because they're holding the stone and there's that so we've now got four points that are sticking out between those points so this is where we need to get in and this is why i wanted to chop down those uh, prongs a little bit so i can get in now it will keep you will keep getting spaces but all you do is you just keep working your way around can you see? Oh, am I out of show? Okay. Uh, just keep working your way around. In, in and over. In and over. So as you can see, what, what was all waving about is now tightening up. And what, we, what we're aiming for is to have no gaps in that at all. But I do have to say, I just do love this look. And I know uh, jewellery makers use some ready-made ones where they have a stone inside another stone like this. And uh, it's just such great fun to do your own and be able to choose all your own colours and have the fun of making it yourself. So I'll, I'll just keep um, going around. I, I won't, probably won't do it as nice as I would normally because otherwise... You're just going to be watching me do this all day. Okie dokie. Okay. Because I've done so much preparation, it's, <laughs> it's going to look as though I've done all this in an hour. And I promise you, I haven't. Had we been pickling and filing and using the emery paper grits, etc., and the polishing machine. So, um, normally, I would, and it is good practice not to drag this, um, this pusher onto this bottom plate. It's, that's just reminding me because I've just done it. In this instance, you're not going to see it because the um, donut is going to be on top of it. But that doesn't mean that it's a good thing to do. So I think, um, because I would put a lot more work into that, I'm gonna call that a day for now on that. And then, but what I'd do if I'd finished it off properly, I would then get the burnisher. And what we do with the burnisher is we and we can push in a little bit is go around it 
and push in push in that top and just get it as tight as we can I mean to be honest if you're not used to bezel setting I would do a few set a few bezels before you do this because you won't have these prongs getting in your way and they, they can be a bit of a pain but that just adds to the fun and excitement of soldering etc <laughs> Because you never know, you, w you wake up one day and the solder doesn't go on anything for you. And then you get up another day and everything goes absolutely honky-dory. So there we go. So uh, I, I would work that some more, but you, you get the drift. I then hold this, uh, this burnisher and then I go round the top. Now you will see a difference in this when I do this you will see the shine I don't know if you can see it yes but all I'm doing is rubbing around the top of that bezel and it will make it level and it will make it shine Let me stop and see oh and see if you can can you see any can you see the difference in the shine on there at all it's a little bit a bit far away maybe but um yeah as i say that i would do i would do more of um go, go around the side make sure it's all tucked in really really nicely i mean it's going to hold the stone now all we're doing is making it look, look a bit more pretty than than it, it did so um do that then go around with your burnisher and get a nice silver line all the way around so now what we're going to do we're going to just pop that in and have a look can you see so now what we've got to do is work out how long we want these prongs so they're quite a bit too long actually I just, I've got all these tools here I've hardly used any of them if I go back to my cutters um, let's have a look I'm going to this is quite this is different than setting a normal stone um, with prongs because like the cabochon you would you would just you would just catch the top of the stone just past the girdle um, but uh, with with this because it's a because it's a doughnut, it actually goes over uh, quite a lot more. So we basically we want longer prongs. That's what I'm trying to say. So <laughs> let's uh, take some more of this off. So I'm going to take that off, and then I'm going to just bend down so I've got it at eye level. You you could measure this, and the proper way would be to measure it. In fact, that's not going to be long enough now. But hey, we'll we'll go with what we've got. There we go. Yeah. You see it done properly on the one I've already made. I mean, the fact that we're rushing this isn't uh, it isn't going to be perfect anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little needle file, and um, first of all, I'm going to flatten these now prongs are a matter of personal design um, they're a design feature so you can um, you can shape them like claws um, you can trim bits off you can you can do if you if you have a look around on the internet you see lots and lots of different types of claw now I'm not going to do all these four perfectly you can also if you've got a cup burr you can also put a cut burr on the top and it just smooths out the ends but um, as I'm basically showing you the process here let's have a look Ooh, squeaking and, and I would also I would round it off what we don't want is these claws to catch on anything so we we would go around take all these edges off um, I'd use some emery paper or one of your blocks your net you know your nail blocks you could actually use that and go go over uh, but be careful of this stone in the middle make sure you don't touch that because it will scratch it will scratch 
so we, we could do all that and then go around and you would basically just make those really really nice and smooth and shiny um, but we haven't got time today so uh, we're going to just show you what I do next now where did I put that prong pusher <laughs> I had it had it two seconds ago oh there it is falling off yeah well done <laughs> Um, Adam spotted that uh, right so we're going to push this pop this back on and uh, again we're going to do a little bit at a time okay so we're going to go right and do opposites so we're going to go a little bit in there a little bit over there that one definitely isn't long enough um, go go over there Having left all those great big long prongs, I've now, you know, in all the rush to get it done, I've cut them too short. But it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It'll, uh, it, it's, uh, it's not, it's not going to be a saleable piece anyway. Let's put it that way. So, as I say, um, we, we're doing opposites again. You have to be careful. Um, that that just moved. So now we'll push that. See if we can push it back because we want that to be central. So we push that over there. Then we'll do these two over there. That over there. Actually, I saw that, but I saw that go down. So that's going to hold. Now, these longer ones, I'll, I'll probably demonstrate, <laughs> demonstrate on these, these two that the proper size. Uh, but you can see it on the original one anyway. I mean, I did, I did take a lot of time and I did get them perfectly. Now, push that in there. It's surprising what you can do when it's um, when you've got you give yourself plenty of time, and that's what you need to do on a project because this is this is a, a quite a complex piece to do with two lots of stones, different stone setting, and you've got drilling and you've got soldering. Um, but it is. I just wanted you to see that it's actually all very doable, and if you break it down into slices, um, then. You know, you, you you don't overface yourself. You you can just um, deal with deal with one little piece at a time, uh, and then you don't get overawed by it so much. I mean, to be honest, I I could have put money on the fact that my soldering wouldn't go great today, but it did. So you never know, do you? Um, so anyway, I've pressed those over. They're not they're not brilliant but I've pressed them over I mean if you look at that one they are beautiful <laughs> oh there's that one if you look at those they are beautiful they would have been perfect but never mind so what I do here I think what I did on mine and I'm going to spoil these prongs now because they're no good anyway what I did with mine was I got my cut my flush cutters and at 45 degrees see if I can do it let's do it on one of the longer ones 45 degrees I just snipped snip that curve because this is round wire you can do it with a uh, half round wire and then put the flat bit on the stone then I'll show you on this one actually so I've cut that at an angle and then if you get your little needle file covering up your stone can I just pick it up a second let's get my... and there then yeah just smooth what you want is to be able to run your hands over and nothing to catch it on your clothing or your skin even um, and certainly if you're you know okay it's okay if you do yourself damage but if you're gifting or you're selling then you want to make sure it's a nice comfortable um piece to wear particularly if somebody's buying it to gift it themselves you don't you don't want them to think oh that were a, that was a load of rubbish <laughs> um let me uh just 
finish that one off a little bit so you can hopefully you can see this so I'm going in with my nail block we'll just concentrate on this one and see if I can make a, a, a good job of of the one So I'm just going to face this towards me so that I can see. There we go. That's looking really nice, actually. That one prong. <laughs> one prong. <laughs> now I would keep, I would keep touching those, and if I feel a prickly bit, then I would go back in. And I would get rid of it. I certainly wouldn't stop. Um, you could run the the piece I've I've made before for the uh, advent calendar. Um, you can rub your hands over all of those uh, prongs, and um, they won't catch on anything. There's there's no sharp edges at all. Right. So that would would take a little bit more work, but I don't know. Can I? Can can you see that one? Uh, there compared shall I shall I do it on its side it, oh, can you see it there so if you see that that's going over and it's got uh, a piece taken off so it's not surrounded going over there so rounded uh, and then we've smoothed it all off so then the next thing you would do you do all of those give it a good old polish uh, whatever your preference is for polishing to be fair it should all be polished but I'm saying that because this looks terrible um, but it should if you do all your polishing and filing as you go along this should actually still still be nice um, what the lady who taught me when I had my first original um, lessons um, she used a good analogy that when you're baking a cake the last thing you do is put the cherry on top there's nothing else to do when you put the cherry on top and putting your stones on your jewelry is like putting the cherry on top of a cake so if you if you remember that that everything should be done before you set those stones which in this case it clearly isn't because um we've had to do it in super speedy time um so yeah so also also oh i'm caught also what i'd what i'd recommend sticking to myself um is let me get my little needle file well we've got a little bit more time take the corners off just get your just get your cutters snip the tiniest little bit off the end and just go around with your needle file and and your or, or your block and just just smooth it off Good. big sweeps going round like that if you can see that go around all four corners and it's a, and and these corners as well it's a much more professional look if you're you're square or i mean you can make this round you can make this whatever shape you like you don't have to make it square um but if those edges are not square like like as though you've just cut them out of a sheet of, of silver if you round those corners like that it really does it just gives you a much i'm not sure if you can see that but it just gives you a much more professional look and if i can just uh, i mean that that's it that that should be clean polished put your jump ring on and then your chain but if i can just in the last couple of minutes before i go if i could just show you on the one i've made that um, i actually made the chain too so what I did was I got to I was going to show you how to do it but I haven't had I was a bit ambitious I think um, it's um, two millimeter round wire and the way I flattened the ends for the for the prongs to sit in the back plate I, I but you do it like um, let, let me see if I can demonstrate it you flatten it um, sorry you can yep there we go so so you flatten it there with get your hammer you flatten it there but then you don't turn it round and do the same you actually 
turn it that way. So both ends are going in different directions, basically. That's how it, that's how it stays. And then you uh, mark the flat bits with your marker pen and you drill your hole, punch your hole, whichever way you like getting holes in your jewellery and join them together with, um, with jump rings and it makes a very, very, very effective chain. So I think that's probably as much as I can fit in. I, I think we've covered every... That one actually, the, the original one, it has got a textured back plate but obviously these are designs that you can design, that you can decide for yourself. Uh, um, I, I, I can't tell you which texture you like or whether you want it smooth or, or even just um, uh, matte finish or textured. You, that's a design feature that you can decide for yourself. And uh, so I will, first of all, thank you very much. Thank you for st sticking with me. Thank you for all your support this last year. Um, since the, It's been a whirlwind since Britain's Next Gem. It's been fabulous. So Thank you, and may I wish you all a very Merry Christmas, and most importantly, a very happy and healthy New Year. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.